What's going on, everyone? Boyle on here, and you know what day it is today. And unless you've been living under a rock, then you'll know that today is patch day. And we have patch 4.2 now, including three new playable characters in the form of Squirrel Girl, Emma Frost, and Beast. We also have the inclusion of the new Ultra Store, which is going to include new orange mini unique gear pieces, purple gear, and much more, uh, which you can use through using your Ultimus, uh, your Ultimus fragments that you've been collecting for those characters that you have max level. Also, alongside these changes, we d did also get a new item inventory count, so to speak. It's a new advanced option in the settings where you can see how many of each item you have before you buy them in the store, and it'll show you there. Not only this, but we did get a sizable rework to a handful of characters, including the new Young Avengers tag characters and X-Men as well. And the biggest of all of them was Strife in this update. I think the Marauders are going to be the new king of patch 4.2. I'm not going to do a deep dive in the Marauders on this video though, I'll be covering this later in another video uh, about my overall thoughts on them. Uh, in this video we'll be going through the new changes, sorry, the new game features and the new characters that are in this patch individually. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I just wanted to kick the video off by showing people where they can find this new item store count option. So it's pretty simple, just click on the gear in the gear symbol here in the corner to get into your settings menu and then you'll find the advanced options button here and then when you toggle that you can then scroll down to the bottom and you'll see the item count in store. So make sure you have this clicked on and then when we go back into the supply store or well, any of the other stores you'll see all of the items that you do have. So here you'll see under the items I have 964 superior basic callus. Uh, before that you used to have to click on them obviously and it would show them here. So it does kind of take away that extra click that you have to do to get to it. Unfortunately it's not like a full inventory count of everything that you own. I, I guess the system's resources probably couldn't do that. But this is what we have for now and it's better than nothing I guess. Now I quickly wanted to go over some of the important mails that we got uh, as soon as the patch or the servers went live again and that's including this one here which now Cyclops and Red Skull are now in the orbs, all the orbs, uh, basic, premium, ultimus and mega and they removed Baron Mordo, Wasp and Miss Marvel from the mega orbs so that's more reasons to possibly yeah, I'm still hoarding my mega orbs personally because I want more of these characters to be removed before I pull it but at least now uh, it's a little better chance that you're gonna get a more premium character uh, than some of the ones that people have maxed out so that is nice there and finally Cyclops and Red Skull in the orbs not sure why they waited for that for so long you know when all of the others Black Order is even in there so I don't know why they weren't but you know glad I can start getting a small trickle of them <laughs> And we also got the the Squirrel Girl mail here. So we do have Squirrel Girl is out now with the pre-offer, uh, the, the paid offer version of her if you don't want to wait for the event, uh, with her event starting on July the 24th. So that's in 10 days that that event will be going out for free-to-play players. Uh, also, she is focused now in the Red Star Orbs as well. I don't know. It doesn't say for how long, but I suspect for like a week or so she'll be in the Red Star Orbs for that as well. So uh, get pulling on your red stars if you want to get some high red stars for Squirrel Girl. And I think that's all I wanted to share just immediately right now. And next I want to bring everyone's attention to the Ultra Store. Now this is a brand new feature that was released today and it's, <laughs> there's quite a bit of stuff here guys. Uh, so depending on how far along you are with Ultimus, you actually don't even need to be, as far as I'm aware, because uh, I don't have 7 star Ultimus, that you don't actually need 7 star Ultimus in order to start collecting these. So it does cost a lot if you want to buy these things from the store, but you have an option. At least for me, all I'm seeing though is purple from the supplies section, and it's quite sizable. So 4,500 fragments to get 15 ABCs. That's equivalent to two Ultimus orbs. So it's, it's, it's a lot. So it's largely for people who already do have Ultimus orbs, sorry, Ultimus at 7 star, but if you want to trade those in for stuff other than him, then you can do so. Now, if you go to the orbs section, this is where you'll find the original Ultimus orb. So this is, you know, 30 Ultimus orbs worth saved up. So that's still the 2,000 fragments that you need for that. Uh, but on top of that, you're going to, and I, as far as I'm aware, it's still the same. I think they did increase the drop for Ultimus in the center, wherever he is. It's alphabetical order, isn't it? Um... Uh, or is it here? Guaranteed 15% chance here. Yeah, so you can actually get up to 20, 15, 25, and 50. So you can actually get way more Ultimate Shards here if you want to do that. So that's what was changed. Otherwise, you still get the Ultimate Shards on the side as well. So what they did add, though, is they added all of these new orbs. So there's the Orange Catalyst Orb, and we'll click on the contents for this. So 
inside we do have some uh, superior basic alice. So you have a 85% chance in the center to get 16 of these, and then 24 and 40. So these are smaller drops. So on on the side, the pillars here is just other catalyst parts. So these are the damn you know all the ones that you need for the gear as well. And it doesn't so it's 10 of them, and then 16 and 30 rarely. And I think it's was on the same on the right. Yeah. So it's not bad, uh, but you are spending 10,000 Ultimus Fragments, and that's five orbs worth. So you're really going to have to make a decision, I guess, where you are in in, in your game. You know, if you're a early mid-game or late-game player, late-game players probably will end up taking the these orbs rather than the, the Ultimus Orbs because there's probably only a handful of new characters in there that you could probably possibly get anyways. Uh, there also is these other orbs. So this is very similar to, and I'll just dive quite quickly over here, like the Blitz one. So you remember the, the purple orbs from the Blitz store. Now this is basically what it is, what it's turned into now for the Ultimus fragments here. So we get the Orange Bio, the Orange Mutant, Mystic, Skill, and Tech. Now let's just dive into the Bio one and see what we have here. So on this, we'll do the center first, and you got 77% chance roughly to get mid these mini uniques. So it looks like you have a, a, a better chance, it's one, <laughs> unfortunately it's not that many, and you have a rare chance to get two of one of these, so that's in the center, and then on the side you get just regular gear pieces, so it's it's a minimum of three upwards to 13, so three, seven, and 13 of these other gear pieces. Um, it's a lot, I mean yes, it's more chance to get mini uniques, but I mean you're only guaranteed one of them, which Oh boy, for a thousand, uh, sorry, ten thousand Ultimus fragments. That's uh, a lot. So you really have to be at the very end of the game, Ultimus seven star. I mean, you can get these beforehand, but it's a lot of credits. Uh, so I, I would argue that for early to mid game players, it would be probably more beneficial to open these Ultimus orbs because you get fragments and, and sorry shards for characters that you probably could still use at this point in the game. Um. You know, there's there's plenty of characters in here. I, I think they may have even uh, they have they have actually updated it. So they have, uh, I believe, all the characters that are in the red star or not in the red star in the premium orb are in here as well. So you have Toad, Proxima Midnight, Red Skull, even you know. So there is basically everyone I think that's in there. Hella, you know, all the Black Order members. So anyone that can be found in the premium orb, I'm pretty sure can be found here in this 85% chance of the Ultimate Orb. So it would be hard for me to tell people who are sort of in the early to the mid game to get anything other than the Ultimate Orb. I, I still would probably consider getting them. Even the supply stores, this is really rough, guys. Uh, it's a lot, I think, versus what you can get out of the raid credits with the raid store pretty easily. So I would not be spending... <laughs> 4,500 credits for 15 ABCs, you know, yeah, as much as you need ABCs, I, I don't think that's a good trade-off. Not entirely sure how I feel about the orange orbs, you're not getting a whole lot out of them, but, you know, I guess if, that, if you're at that point of the game and you have nothing better to do with it, then then that's an option for you guys, but, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys what was in the new Ultra Store, it's quite interesting, for sure, um, but the values and the cost that you need associated with it is a bit high. And so we finally get to see some of the kit numbers on Squirrel Girl here. And her model actually looks pretty cool. I, I, I really like the squirrel. I think her name is Tippy. And so I hope to see some good animations in the game when I unlock her and get to try her out there. Um, but so instead of the, the blog post where we actually didn't really get to see any of the numbers, we finally do. Uh, and at first glance, I'm a bit disappointed in a few parts of her kit to be honest, but I have no doubts that she'll still play a vital role in the game, either in the DD3 city lane and or when they decide to release a fifth Young Avengers for the team. But let's get started on her kit here. So her basic kick butts, attacks primary target at level 6, or sorry, at level 7, 300% uh, damage and deals a second attack to the enemy with the most speed bar for 210% damage and applies offense down to that target. And this attack ignores taunt and stealth. So... You actually need the level 7 ability to always apply the offense down to the enemy. I think before that it's only 50% if you have it at level 6. And this is only applying offense down to the second target, if I'm reading this correctly, and not actually the first target. Which is a little bit disappointing that it's not both targets. But it is a basic move, so I guess it can't be too overpowered. Uh, her ability, her special ability, Squirrel... Oh, eat nuts, sorry, is her heal move here. Uh, with an ability cost of 3, 
And this is a, uh, this potentially a turn one move, depending on if you're using her or if the AI is using her. Uh, and heal any young Avenger allies that are under 50% health for 15% of her max health. And it, all, it also heals all allies for an additional 15% of her max health. So this is potentially up to 30% healing for any young Avengers allies on the team if they are low HP. Otherwise, it's just 15% of her max health if you're using this uh, with other characters. If It also clears all negative effects at level 7 anyways, which is great for a 3 energy cost skill and does damage by calling the ally with the highest damage to assist. What is kind of weird here, though, is that the level 5 text just says clear negative effects from all allies. The level 4 says clear two negative effects from the three most injured allies. So I'm assuming that it just it clears two negative effects from all allies. It doesn't really specify the two part. So I don't know if that's a typo or not, or if that's actually supposed to be maybe three or what. We'll have to see when we actually use her what's actually supposed to happen. I'm assuming it's clear two negative effects from all allies, but if it's different then all the better otherwise you need this level 7 upgrade if you're looking to clear all your negative effects from all allies so going from you know two maybe to all then you would need to get that oranges in there for that so on to squirrel girl's ultimate move squirrel army Attack all enemies for 260% damage at level 7 here, and apply bleed and offense down. So you get the bleed portion at level 5 and the offense down portion at level 6. This is where I was a little bit disappointed and that it wasn't two turns of bleed or two turns of offense down, or both. Uh, it is a low cooldown though and usable on turn 2. I hope the animation makes up for my disappointment over the two turn offense down though. Um, because I think for a new character at this point of the game, it wouldn't have been unreasonable to ask for two turns of offense down. That would have made it much better. And going back to the, uh, the special really quick, I, I think it's, it's a great support move and the percentages aren't terrible either for a low skill. So I just wanted to point that out there. And, uh, finally her passive unbeatable. And that's when a young Avenger ally drops below 50% health apply defense up to that ally and fill this character or squirrel girl speed bar by 30 percent this is great here it gives her survival gives survivability to her and to i'm assuming it works on her it says young avenger ally she's a young avenger ally so i don't see why this wouldn't do that as well uh, but also everyone else on the team uh, and, and also increasing that speed bar so looping her back around to her turn so that she can get her heal off uh, she also gives herself and Young Avenger allies 20% uh, drain, uh, but you do need the level 5 uh, oranges for this to get that. And, and same with the speed, with that extra speed bar as well. Uh, she also gives 20% max health to herself and Young Avenger allies as well. I was a bit disappointed the drain wasn't a bit higher, maybe 50%. I don't know if that was too much of a stretch to ask for though. I know the symbiotes get 100% in Raisin Dark Dimension and that is pretty overpowered. Uh, so I thought maybe 50% might be something we might see, but I guess we didn't. So Overall, though, it's a good kit. It was a bit of a letdown by a few things, primarily the ultimate lacking two turns of offense down. Um, that might sound overpowered, but uh, given what uh, some other newer characters can do, don't see why we couldn't, get, couldn't have got that. The drain was also a bit lower than I thought, but aside from that, it's a decent kit, and still see her being a good character, a good choice, rather, to take into Dark Dimension 3, especially since she has a speed stat of 120, uh, which is actually pretty good, and in Dark Dimension 3, you definitely need characters that are on the faster side of things. Uh, she will be available pretty soon, I don't know if you can see it, oh, this is Squirrel Girl Orb, but that's the pre-offer. Uh, she will have her own event pretty soon, which I mentioned, uh, I think in about 10 days from this video, and so you'll have a good chance to get her up to 4 to 5 stars, depending on your luck on event orbs. Now let's hop over to Beast to see what they gave him for numbers. And now we have Hank McCoy, the genius scientist and doctor of the X-Men. Uh, finally here after much teasing uh, for many months and patches in the loading screen, but we finally have him. At first glance, I think he is a bit mediocre, but I do want to say that a lot of the existing X-Men did get slight reworks on their kit. Uh, basically do not have to include specific X-Men members anymore, and, and Storm also got a boost to her basic charges uh, while in the presence of Beast. I'll leave a link in the description below for those who haven't looked at the patch notes themselves yet, and you can see some of the changes there. But anyways, on to Beast kit numbers. So his basic, Dignified Strike, attacks primary target at level 7 for 250% damage and flips one positive effect to negative effect. 
Uh, this flips two positive effects during a counterattack or an assist. Uh, this is slightly disappointing, only because the chances of this happening are kind of rare, uh, limited to probably Cyclops' special or Storm's assists. But it seems that if you're wanting to use any of these in campaign and raids, you, you might include Storm possibly now, anyways. Um, so that's yeah. I, I wouldn't. It looks, looks like based on the upgrades here, you don't really need to bother about the level seven upgrade for that, as it's just damage. And if you read any or listened to any of my videos, then you would know that uh, any upgrades with just damage isn't worth it. Now, Beast Special Volatile Experiment is a turn one move with a low energy cooldown of three, uh, clears two negative effects on self at level seven and heals the most injured, two most injured allies, sorry, for 20% of his max health, and then attack all enemies for 300% damage. Um, now the damage part is really nice because it has a low energy cooldown of three, I'm a bit disappointed that it only heals two allies and not everyone, and I'm also disappointed it only cleanses himself and not everyone as well. Uh, even though his passive does have a healing portion as we'll get to, I, I think skills that heal everyone is a bit better. However, this skill can be used actually outside of X-Men, I guess, so uh, it, it is what it is. Now his ult, and also for this, I mm, if, I wouldn't upgrade the oranges either. I, you're going from, I think, one, one to two negative effects from self at level four to two at level 7. There's a little bit of extra damage, but probably not needed here. And Beast's Ultimate a Mutant Enhancement. This is pretty interesting and it's pretty loaded here. So I'm going to actually go through at the bottom here, and even though we can't see all the text because I don't have them unlocked, I am going to read you guys uh, the text that I have. So it's, it's pretty loaded. Uh, this is a turn 2 move on an energy cooldown of 6 when maxed out here at level 6 because this is now cost 6 ability energy. So apply offense up to self and all blaster, brawler, and x-men allies. Defense up to self and all protector, controller, and x-men allies. And then apply speed up and grant ability energy to self and all support and x-men allies. And then apply regen to all x-men and mutant allies here. So if you see this at level 7, so the regen part ticks, uh, triggers up at level 7. So let's break this down a little bit here. Um, basically, if you're just using X-Men allies, you're getting a whole slew of buffs. You're getting offense up, defense up, speed up, and ability energy, and regen as well if you have level 7. This is pretty great and really a buff bonanza here. It can also be used outside of X-Men though, but more specifically. Uh, so the damage characters, the, the blasters and brawlers are going to get offense up. The tanks and controllers are going to get defense up and speed up and ability energy to support allies. I think out of all of this, uh, what could be interesting is the speed up and the ability energy for support characters. I could see Beast as a usable character in the Dark Dimension 3 global lane, only because a lot of the characters in this lane are either X-Men, uh, namely Phoenix and Colossus, which are used quite commonly there, or other support characters like Shuri, uh, Mr. Sinister, and Scientist Supreme all have the support tag. Uh, so this could be uh, a good way to feed them even faster energy in this and keep the other two alive. Uh, but this is just some of my first thoughts on that move anyways. So let's get over to Beast Passive. It's kind of interesting too, Stars and Garters. And I talked about this in my blog post video on Friday, but basically he's going to be well used in any of the campaign missions or challenges that you can use himself and Phoenix in. Basically, um, if you look at the text here, if this character is three or more X-Men allies at the start of a battle, the first ally death doesn't count towards the loss of metals. So if you use Phoenix and Phoenix dies and turns into Dark Phoenix, you actually don't lose a metal and you can still three-star your match. So this is interesting, but um, for more late game players right now, this probably doesn't really matter much. So um, yeah, and, and then other than that, he does also heal, uh, sorry, he applies regeneration to the most injured ally and if they are X-Men, then heal them for 15% of back, uh, beast max health on top of that. Uh, and the level 5 here adds resistance. So if you had level 5, it would be 20% resistance to himself and all X-Men allies. Again, not really worth the upgrade. So in, in my opinion, anyways. Uh, so if, if, if I were to do any of them, I don't know. It might be this mutant enhancement part. Again, I was talking about dark, using him in Dark Dimension 3, possibly. Which you would need this here for the grant ability energy for self and all support allies. Aside from that, I don't think I would really upgrade any of his other abilities. So he seems to be pretty light on the orange requirements, which is okay. 
Now, a lot of my overall thoughts on Beast is sort of what I mentioned earlier in the video. He's for sure an interesting character, but I don't know if X-Men, as they stand for like Alliance War offense, really need the help from him to win, or if it's going to make a sizable difference unless you kick Psylocke or Wolverine to the curb and add him in there. In terms of raids, well, there are already so many characters available in the late game meta of sort of Black Bolt and company and everyone else that you can use for Ultimate 7. I don't know if you need him or not. I could see Beast being a more mid-game character, though, for those who still don't have some of the top characters, or for those who haven't cleared all the campaigns and challenges, and you can use Phoenix with him to do so. Uh, he might have a place in Dark Dimension 3 Global, like I mentioned, given what he can do. And his speed stat's uh, pretty respectable at uh, 116 here, uh, so that's not, pr not, not bad as far as Dark Dimension 3 characters go. Um, I think I might be onto something with Dark Dimension 3. I don't know if I'll consider him for my second run, but maybe. Uh, but otherwise, I don't know how much value he might bring to the late game players at this time. Uh, perhaps with the new ISO 8 campaign down the road, though, he might actually be useful there. But we'll have to see for that. And we saved the best for last because, wow, Emma Frost's kit is pretty bonkers, I think. And definitely the winner of this patch, probably. Uh, interestingly, she doesn't actually have the Marauders tag on her, which is kind of cool. Uh, but when I go and do a, a video on the Marauders, you'll find, uh, or if you go look at Sinister's kit, you'll also see that was reworked to include the text of Emma Frost into it. Uh, I'm also kind of hoping that maybe down the line this might open to her, her open her up to the possibility of being a Hellfire Club member at some point. I think that's where she deserves to be personally, uh, but that's just me. Uh, but let's get started on her kit because it's pretty crazy in terms of what she can do. Emma Frost's basic is called Fashionable Strikes. Now, at level 6, this does 230% damage to the primary target and flip two positive effects to negative effects. Uh, but if she is charged, attack primary target for 280% damage and clear two positives instead of flipping. Now, this charge mechanic has to do with her swapping between regular Emma Frost and Diamond Form, because when she's charged, she's in Diamond Form, and that's why her basic hits harder. But instead of flipping, she's clearing. Uh, which is a bit of a downgrade in my opinion, but I guess they're trying to compensate you with some extra damage. Personally, I just prefer the flips, though. Uh, her special is called Diamond Form, and it's a turn one move. And it has a low energy cooldown of three as well. Now, interestingly, if she happens to have charged already, she'll clear the charged. Uh, now, at level seven here, uh, this is going to be a barrier itself for 20% of her max health. Clear all negative effects from self and all allies, and also apply immunity to self and all mutant villain allies. Then apply slow to all enemies, and she gains charge. So, now this is a really loaded move as well, but the first thing I'm confused about is, why does she clear charge only to put it on at the end of the skill? But I guess this might be so that the charge just doesn't stack beyond one or something, so you can't like keep her infinitely in diamond form or something. Anyways, in terms of the level difference, it looks like that you'll probably want this at level 7, but it'll depend on where you're using her maybe. The upgrade is basically going from 3 negative effects to all, and then 3 random mutant villain allies uh, to all mutant villain allies as well. So that's part of going from 6 to 7 here, the immunity part and the negative effects here. Uh, it's a very good support, very great support move as well, and I like that it applies to immunity to mutant villain allies as well, opening her up to possible uses maybe beyond the Marauders, maybe now in the, into the future. Uh, if you happen to have Emma Frost later, then you don't have maybe the full Brotherhood 2.0 team and the Marauders, you might be able to mix and match. You know, I've I've said maybe, you know, most late game player, players will have both, but if you have, for example, Magneto leveled up, but you don't have Total Blob leveled up, then maybe you might could even throw Magneto in, in, in place of Sabretooth or something. You know, not everyone will probably do that, but I mean, at least this provides some option uh, to sort of use her elsewhere if you want to. Now, Frost's ultimate turn the tables is a four energy cooldown move starting at two out of four and usable on turn two. So again, if charged, clear charged. So this will take her out of her diamond form and this time doesn't reapply it. But it does clear all positive effects on enemies uh, at level 7 here, and then blind the primary target, and then mind control two enemy or ally characters with the most damage to attack the primary target. Now think Loki, but better, because it could even use your own allies if they are stronger. Uh, they also gain plus 40% extra damage on their attack, and if that target happens to get killed off, then you get to apply blind to the, mo the enemy with the most speed bar that isn't a summon. 
So this is like Loki's mind control on steroids since it clears all positive effects from the enemies as well. So if they have any buffs, say goodbye to those. Uh, this is probably something you're going to want to invest oranges into since at level 6 it only has a 50% chance to uh, mind control a second target. But you do get 100% here at level 7. And you also get uh, clear all positive effects rather than I think 3 positive effects it would be. And you get, an, you get extra damage on the mind control characters as well. So I think this is definitely a good candidate for uh, an orange upgrade here for Emma Frost. This is a really loaded move, but very impressive at the same time. Finally, Frost Pass of the White Queen is where you learn all about her diamond farm and stuff. Uh, so at level 5, or well, 4 or 5, on, on turn heal self for 15% of max health, although this part is from level 4 here. Apply minus 10% speed bar to all enemies, uh, or 10% speed, sorry, not speed bar. Um, and this happens at level 1 that she gets it. Uh, I, I'm not sure too much about this part, if this is on her turn or if this is on spawn or what. I have a really bad feeling this might end up getting bugged because Domino had a very similar passive. I think with with speed bar perhaps or turn bar and that got bugged out and got they ended up changing that to plus percent speed bar on X-Force instead or something like that. So uh, we'll have to wait and see when she comes out what this ends up being all about because I don't know if it's 100% clear what this actually means or if it's just a flat minus 10% to uh, all the enemy's speed. I, I, I don't know. Something like, you know... In, in, Empower Thanos gets something like that, but for damage and armor stats or something like that. So we'll have to wait and see. Now, while charged, she gains also 400% armor and 500% resistance. This is from Diamond Form whenever she has charge. So this is getting this is a significant increase in her defensive stats while she has charge. And on War Defense on Spawn, apply two uh, defense up for two turns to all mutant villain allies now this is why you want the oranges in her for this so if you're using her on war defense because this goes from a 50 percent chance uh, on level four to a hundred percent chance for the defense up this also really shores up the marauders and strikes weakness by adding defense up to the kit and really elevating the team's strength with emma frost now, really, I, I, I think Emma, Emma Frost's kit has the potential to be kind of broken. It's a very strong kit in almost every skill, and they're on a relatively low cooldown with uh, 3 on the special and 4 on the ultimate, making her an awesome supporty character. Even though she's tagged as a controller, she has a lot of support moves too. I also think she might have the potential to be used in Dark Dimension 3 as well, in the global lane, only because of the mind control part, uh, which could really have the potential, maybe, to, to do a lot of damage if two of the Dark Dimension characters are smacking somebody else that could do a lot of damage there. Uh, and also the 10% speed, which, depending on how that works, uh, that could play a factor too. But I'll be doing a video later on uh, more about the Marauders specifically and how they're all going to be working together with Emma Frost. So, uh, Emma Frost, like I said, is going to be a 100 shard unlock. Is she going to be a 100 shard Blitz character? Uh, that happens occasionally. Or is she going to be a Milestone character? But we've had Negasonic and now Symbiote Spider-Man recently, so I'm not sure how likely this is going to be. So, uh, guess is in the comments down below how you might think she might come out. And I also wanted to point out that both Squirrel Girl and Beast are also 45 shard unlocks too. So we know how Squirrel Girl is coming out. I'm assuming that Beast is going to be a Blitz, uh, but we'll have to wait till we hear more about that. And that's everything for today's patch day video. Uh, there was really a lot to talk about, but just really wanted to get this out there for you guys today before too much time went by. I'll be doing more individual videos on the new characters and the game features probably as well, so look forward to those in the near future. And very likely I'll be doing a video on Squirrel Girl's Red Star pulls and maybe an early unlock if I decide to actually buy her. I haven't decided yet. Uh, so look out for that uh, when I'm ready to do that. And we got a lot of stuff today in this patch, more than we did I think in the X-Force patch. So I hope that this cycle ends up being a bit better than the last. Uh, what are you guys most excited for in this patch though? I'm, I'm still pretty excited for Squirrel Girl, even though I am slightly disappointed in her kits, largely the, you know, the two turns of debuffs that I wish she had. Uh, I have mixed feelings about Beast, and I'm not totally sure how much she's going to add for late game players at this point, but I do think that Emma Frost is really going to make Marauders into a scary team when she's made available, so <laughs> watch out for that. I want to thank everyone for watching my video, and if you enjoyed what you saw, then please smash that like button down below, and consider, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, but that's it for me for just now, and hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day. And until next time, guys, stay safe. Boylan signing out.